Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Today we have another lesson in Megal Goal 6. But firstly, we will start with a quick overview for the previous lesson, which was reading. In the previous lesson, we had reading and vocabulary building uh, lesson, and we focused in this lesson on reading uh, an article that has three stories of people who survived against the odds. We listened to these stories, we learned some of the words, and we linked them with their definitions. Here we have a list of these words. We started with the first one, which is detectable. Number two, disoriented. Number three, exhilarating. Number four, haggard. Number five, hallucinating. Number six, intact. Reception. And the last one is startling. We talked about the first one. We said that detectable means something that can be found. Number two, disoriented, something that can be can cause confusion. And the answer is H. Number three, exhilarating is G, causing a strong feeling of excitement and happiness. Haggard is C, very thin and tired. Number five, hallucinating is B, imagining things that are not real. Number six, intact, remaining whole and unharmed. The answer is A. Seven is reception, the quality of radio waves received by a device. The answer is E. Number eight, startling is very surprising and the answer is F. We had pre-reading uh, warm-up. We talked about what we are going to read together. Uh, we discussed some of the things that could happen for a person when things happen against the odds and we asked you to tell some of the stories that happened to you or something that you have heard or read in your life. After that, we read these three stories. Then we answered the questions for the following. Uh, sorry, we answered the, the questions of the following questions here in this after reading part. Today on page 28, we have a writing lesson. We are going today to focus on one of the disasters, which is the heat wave. As you can see here, the title, Caught in a Heat Wave Without Electricity. But before we start reading, um, the introduction and the tips, we will go to some of the questions that could help us think and reflect upon what we are going to read. Number one, what would constitute a heat wave in your area? What temperatures are considered above normal? Do you think the same applies in other countries? Number two, what do people do in your country to cope with exceedingly high temperatures? What do they eat or drink? What kind of activities do they avoid? And how do they keep cool? Okay, these questions called pre-reading questions. These questions help you think and reflect upon what you are going to read so you can understand it in a deeper way. Firstly, let's think about the question. It says, how do people, or what pe do people do in your country to cope with exceedingly high temperatures? What do they eat or drink? What kind of activities do they avoid? How do they keep cool? For example, you can say that people stay home during the day, uh, the day. they keep the air conditioning on, they run their errands at night, okay? These are some of the suggestions for answer that you can use. Right now, before we start reading, you can pause the video and think about some of the things that you can come up with to avoid the heat waves. For example, if you live in a city where having heat waves is uh, expected usually, think about the, the tips or advices that you could 
give for the people or the visitors for your city when, uh, when they come in a time of heat waves. What are the things that you are going to write for them? What are the advices that you are going to give to them? You can pause the video right here and start writing your own tips. Okay, now let's go to the first part of the reading material. Caught in a heat wave without electricity. Page 28. 10. Writing. Caught in a heat wave without electricity. A heat wave is a period of excessively hot weather accompanied by high humidity. A heat wave is relative to the usual weather of an area. In other words, what people from hotter climates consider normal might be termed as a heat wave in cooler areas. Severe heat waves can cause crop failure, countless deaths from hyperthermia, as well as shortage of water and power failure due to excessive use of air conditioning. Densely populated urban areas are more susceptible to heat waves due to inadequate ventilation, retention of heat by tall buildings, and inadequate nighttime cooling. City dwellers rely heavily on air conditioning during the summer months to function normally and avoid potentially fatal heat strokes. What should one do in the city during a heat wave with no air conditioning because of a power failure? Okay, before we answer the last question, which is what should one do in the city during a heat wave with no air conditioning because of power failure, let's talk a little bit about what we have just read together. Firstly, we have the first word, which excessively, it means something is increasing unusually. Excessively means something increasing unusually. A heat wave is a period of excessively hot weather. After that, we have another word, which is hyperthermia. Hyperthermia. Countless deaths from hyperthermia. It's a state where the body of the person or the temperature of the body of a person is increasing abnormally. This is called, this state is called hyperthermia. Countless deaths from hyperthermia, as well as shortages of water and power failure due to excessive use of air conditioning. Densely populated urban. Densely means a place or an area that is packed or that is crowded of people. Now we have the question here. What should one do in the city during a heat wave with no air conditioning because of power failure? We gave you some time to think of tips that you can give to the visitors of your city once they come uh, in a time of a heat wave where there is no air conditioning. I think most of you now have some answers, some advices for the, uh, this question. So now we are going to go to the following page where we have some suggested examples or some sub suggested tips. So let's go ahead and listen to these tips together. Here are some tips. Find the coolest place in your home. This could be in a darker corner, on the floor, under a bed, or even in a closet with a protected wall at the back that has remained relatively cool. Make sure you do not shut yourself in. Reduce movement to a minimum. Preserve your ice cubes as long as possible. Ration them. Do not use them all at once. Use them sparingly to keep your face, neck, and inner arms wet and cool. Drink plenty of water to avoid dehydration and have frequent cool showers. Keep a bowl with cool water and a towel or sponge by you to wipe your face, your neck, and arms as often as possible to keep them cool. You might also use a wet towel around your neck or over your head to keep your body temperature down. 
use a traditional fan or a piece of cardboard to fan yourself. Refrain from eating rich foods, e.g., fried fatty food and meat. Have lighter meals with plenty of vegetables and fruit. When you sit, put your feet in a bowl filled with cool water. Hose down the walls and open areas of your home, preferably after sundown, to increase night cooling. Hose down the walls, trees, bushes, and ground around your house as a fire precaution. And whatever you do, stay out of the sun. If you must go out, wear a wide-brimmed hat and sunglasses, or carry an umbrella. Cool weather will eventually come, doesn't it always? Okay, now we have listened to some of the tips, and I'm pretty sure that you both have some uh, points or some tips in common. Now let's go or let's move back to these questions. Now we will focus on the third one. After we have read the text together and we found out some of the information about uh, the heat waves, the first question is, are some of your ideas included in the tips? Is there new information? If yes, what exactly? Now I want you to compare your ideas to the tips that are provided in the book and see what are the differences, what could you benefit from the ideas that you haven't written and they were written in the book. Number two, is there a universally accepted temperature that constitutes a heat wave? Why and why not? Actually, no, there is no uh, an, uh, a universally accepted temperature that constitutes a, a heat wave because uh, a degree that is considered normal in a warm city could be considered uh, unusual in cooler areas. Which are some of the consequences he, uh, caused by a heat wave? Which areas suffer, suffer most? For example, the areas that suffer most uh, are the areas that don't have air conditioning or has uh, shortages uh, in electricity and so on. Now let's go to part B. In, ba in part B, we have three points that we have follow to be able to write our own piece of writing properly. Number one, research and write a how-to guide for increasing your odds of surviving a natural disaster, such as hurricane, earthquake, or flood. Now, your task today is to write how-to guide. And you are asked to choose one of the disasters. For example, flood, hurricane, earthquake, and so on. So pick one of them firstly, then Let's go to the second part. First, choose the disaster that you will focus on. Research tips for surviving the, dis the disaster. Use a chart to write notes about the information you found. So we will firstly start with choosing the disaster. Then we will research for information. We have to read more to be able to understand this disaster to have more information about it. Then after that, we will use this chart to write our own ideas uh, separately here. This chart is divided into three parts, before the disaster, during the disaster, and after the disaster. So we are asked here to write tips for people to give them advices on how they should, or on what they should do in these three stages of the disaster. Number three, write your essay. So we have here this chart. In this chart, we will write all of the ideas that we have in our mind in these three columns. So we will start firstly with picking the topic 
that we are going to write about. Number two, we will research. We will try to find information. After that, we will try to gather all the tips that we can come up with and put them here in these three columns, before the disaster, during the disaster, and after the disaster. But firstly, let's take an example. Here, we have a topic that, the same topic that we are asked to write about, improving your odds for surviving an earthquake. The title here, improving your odds for surviving an earthquake, means improving your chances or your opportunity to survive the earth quick. Earthquake, earthquakes can be so strong that they can cause buildings and bridges to collapse in moments. They can cause such damage that they lead to secondary problems like fires and landslides. They are so dangerous that anyone living in an area in an earthquake prone area should learn tips and techniques for surviving earthquakes. There are many things you can do to improve your odds of surviving an earthquake. For example, after learning that an earthquake is likely to hit your area, you should. This is an example of a piece of writing that you can use to help you writing your own uh, article or writing your own essay regarding the disasters. In this essay, the writer started with an introduction. In the introduction, the writer gave a definition or an overview of the earthquake, giving the, the, uh, the causes or giving the, the, the consequences of the earthquake, saying that uh, earthquakes uh, can be so strong that they can cause buildings and bridges to collapse in moments. Then after that, the writer mentioned some of the dangers of the earthquakes. Then the writer moved to the part where he or she could give the tips for the readers so they can improve their odds for surviving an earthquake. Here in the writing corner, we have some advices that we can use to help us writing your, our own essays properly. Number one, when you write a how-to guide, we have to focus on many things. Number one, research and collect information. So don't start writing your own essay without gathering all the information you need. Number two, make an outline. Include an introduction, guidelines, and a conclusion. So you can use the chart in the previous page to write down all the information or most of the information that you have in your mind. Include an introduction. In the introduction, you give an overview about the disaster that you are going to write about. In the guidelines, give the advices or the tips that you urge people to follow. Then in the conclusion, try to sum up what you have written. Number three, address your readers directly. Number four, think about your readers and the position they are in. Number five, avoid including terrifying stories and consequences. Number six, focus on prevention. Number seven, include humor if possible. Number eight, provide alternatives. This is the last part of our lesson today. Thank you all for attending our lesson and I wish you enjoy the rest of the day. Salaam alaikum.